Hi guys, in this video, we'll be discussing homeostasis and automatic control systems. Finally, a summary. Your body is constantly working to keep everything balanced. This is called homeostasis. The exact definition of homeostasis is that it's a regulation of the internal conditions of a cell or organism to maintain optimum conditions for function in response to internal and external changes. And don't worry, I'm going to go through what this means in this video. So your internal conditions are the things that need to be kept constant, even when there's a change to the body. For example, some of the changes include drinking water, sweating, getting too hot on a sunny day, and eating. These changes either increase or decrease the normal level of substances in your body. Why do we have to keep internal conditions constant? We need to maintain optimal conditions for enzyme action and all cell functions. For example, the active side of the enzyme might change if it becomes denatured as the body temperature is too hot. Keeping everything constant is important for survival as metabolic reactions need to occur at appropriate rates. For example, Metabolic reactions involve enzymes. If the body temperature is too high, these enzymes might denature and they won't be able to carry out these metabolic reactions. How do we keep everything constant? Well, we use both the endocrine and the nervous system in homeostasis. And remember, the endocrine system transmits information through hormones. And these travel in the blood. The nervous system uses nerve cells and these transfer information as electrical impulses. So what do we need to keep constant? Well, some of the conditions your body needs to regulate are body temperature. So you reduce your body temperature when it's hot and increase it when it's cold. This is called thermoregulation. For example, if it's really cold outside and your body temperature drops, your body acts to increase it again by actions such as shivering. It's also important to keep blood glucose concentration constant. Your body makes adjustments when the glucose in your blood gets too high or too low. For example, when you eat a large meal, your blood glucose concentration might increase. Your body acts to then decrease this blood glucose concentration. Otherwise, your body might become damaged. Another thing that needs to be kept constant is water content. There needs to be a balance between the water gained in drink, food and respiration and the water that is lost through urinating, sweating and breathing out. This is called osmoregulation. For instance, if you take in a lot of water, you also need to release a lot of water. So how do we counteract changes from the optimum? Well, a change from the optimum is first detected. Then this information is processed and a response that counteracts the change is triggered. And we call this negative feedback. Let's look at an example of negative feedback and temperature. So the first stage is that conditions in the body change from a set point. And this might mean there's an increase in your body temperature. Now this change is detected. After this, the corrective mechanisms are activated. And this means your body acts to decrease the body temperature. After this, your conditions are returned to a set point, and this is the normal body temperature of around 37 degrees Celsius. And after this, the corrective mechanisms are switched off. You don't want your body temperature to decrease too much. And this cycle of events is negative feedback. The maintenance of a constant internal environment, or homeostasis, is achieved by an automatic control system. So all automatic control systems have receptors, and these are cells which detect stimuli or changes in the environment. For example, we have receptors in the skin. Automatic control systems also need coordination centers. These receive information and process it. Examples include the brain, spinal cord, and pancreas. The brain is a really important coordination center and so is the spinal cord. Both of these make up the central nervous system. Another coordination center is the pancreas. This is an endocrine gland. It releases hormones. 
automatic control systems also have effectors. These carry out the responses to restore optimum conditions, and some examples include muscles or endocrine glands. For example, a response from the muscle might be to a contract. This allows movement. A response from the endocrine gland, for example, a thyroid, may be to produce hormones to keep the metabolic rate constant. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.